afternoon. And uh, thank you for joining us. We're here at the fine studios at NORCAM. I'm sitting with North Reading's political royalty. Uh, to my right, my co-host, Jerry Venezia, who had combined between the school committee and the board of selectmen 20 years of political service to the town, putting aside all his other volunteer activities. Bob Masseri, five-time uh, term member of the board of selectmen. Mel Webster, no, you were five-time five. Five five. member of the school yep. committee. And Mr. Prisco, a three-time member of the Board of Selectmen, now known as the Select Board. And don't forget, um, Mr. Mosseri also served on the school committee. Yeah, finance How many committee. years is that on the school committee? Finance committee, school committee. He did it all. Hillview. Uh, Twelve years on the uh, school committee, about nine years on the finance committee, two wow. different time frames. 12 years on the Hillview Commission and 15 years on the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, that, that up, that makes Bob 106. <laughs> the only thing he didn't do when he was in town was pick up the trash. That was the one <laughs> position he didn't hold. I think he had one more year. He yeah, when he had that, yeah. In terms I of, was the maker of the trash. <laughs> in terms of elected years in volunteerism, I don't know if everyone understands that. Although these gentlemen were all elected several times, uh, to various committees. Uh, they all did it for zero dollars. <laughs> it wasn't one taxpayer penny paid for their service. And we're on the precipice of, I would say, monumental change in the town of North Reading with the upcoming election in May and the three gentlemen to my right stepping aside. Mel has already done so and moved off to greener pastures. I think it's to your left. <laughs> Three gentlemen to your left. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is that right? <laughs> some of them. You say yeah, some of them. I'm not a product of the North Reading yeah. School System. I'm awful sorry. I'm 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 sorry. i am i Anyone jump in? I'll go, I'll go okay. first. I don't, I don't mind. <clears throat> you know, I started out when I got here in, uh, boy, almost 20 years ago now. I was working with the Parks and Rec folks, uh, and I was volunteering, working on that committee. And then we created the Physical Advisory Committee. It was That's really right. my first time I actually got involved with how the town ran. You know, it certainly wasn't FinCom, but we really dug down into the contracts. Sure. We dug down into the budgets. And I learned so much going through that process. And Mr. I Delaney, you and I served on that committee together, and which I still to this day think was the best committee this town has ever had in its history because we learned so much. I mean, we dug down in those contracts and learned things like people were getting paid to have a birthday day off. Not that they didn't deserve it, but it certainly should have gone away and been integrated into their salary. But we learned, where we, I learned so much about creating efficiencies and where we could just eliminate some waste, create some efficiencies, and continue to keep finding ways to improve the salaries for the employees, improve the benefits for the employees. And that's what made me decide, you know, after I got through FAC, it just the next smart thing was to move on to the Board of Selectmen because I had so much knowledge. That, that, that's why I did it. Well, I initially got involved. Um, there was a budget crisis. When isn't there a budget crisis <laughs> with the school department? But uh, it's the reason why you, the school committee creates one. Exactly. Uh, they <laughs> on, had a regular, on a regular basis. Uh, they had to cancel some book purchases because they didn't have enough funding. So a um, guy I knew in town, Bob Armacost, we happened to get together. I think, Sean, you were involved and some other people. And we started uh, a group called Save Our Schools. And we raised, I believe we raised more than $50,000. And we bought uh, books for schools throughout the district. Then from there, uh, Dr. David Troughton, who was the superintendent at the time, he started a similar to what Mike was talking about. It was a parent um, fiscal kind of advisory committee, provide input on the budget before the school committee gets it. And I think he almost set that up as a training ground for future school committee members. So after that, uh, I think it was a couple years later, I said, I, I'm really interested in this. And that plus the fact that North Reading at the time was eighth from the bottom in per pupil spending in the state. And Remember I said, this, this, can't, this can't continue. So those are really the two things that, that got me involved. Well, um, my wife and I moved to North Reading in 1966, and we both grew up in Revere, and I think uh, Come a long the, way, idea yeah. of, <laughs> the idea of a town meeting, enthusiasm, I got enthusiasm yeah, over yeah, that, yeah. and I started going to town meeting, and I watched the activity, and 
next thing you know, I joined the Finance Committee. And back in those days, there were no, at least in the beginning of the cycle, there were no computers. And the town meeting voted on the omnibus article one line at a time. Wow. And How long did town meeting go for? As a member of the Finance Committee, I started, we had a large, big sheet of one of those papers hanging on a chart. Yeah. And we would say what the tax rate was going to be. And every time they voted, we changed Change the, the tax number. rate. <laughs> and we went through that cycle. And then uh, I got interested in the school department because I, they had one year uh, presented an 8% increase in their budget when I was on the Finance Committee. I fought it. And we convinced town meeting against the law back then to cut the budget to 4%. Uh, something's never changed. <laughs> something's <laughs> never changed. Well, Jerry, that's how we ended up on the, on the Board of Selectors, right? And then the school committee uh, agreed and set their budget to 4%. And the whole year went by, and the Teachers Association filed suit somewhere in the oh, courts, wow. and they won. Wow. But by the time the decision was made, the year was over, and nothing was done about it. So the town wants. I the it, town it, won, It's yeah. interesting, Bob. No, actually, the school department yeah. won. Bob got interested in the town by going to town meeting. I would think anybody that went to town meeting would be thinking about moving out of town. <laughs> it, it, it was different back then. So I got, in, I got interested in the school committee as a result, and I joined the school committee. And it wasn't that I wanted to cut the school committee for money. I just thought they were asking far too much money right. at the time. Yeah. And one reason was the school population before I moved in town was about 3,600 kids. There mm. was a dual session. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. And uh, when I got on the school committee, uh, we closed during my tenure two schools, Murphy and Little. Didn't you get uh, voted out as a result of that, Bob? I got <laughs> voted. I got voted out as a result of uh, after my 12th year. I was running again. I was in support of the. Uh, uh, building a new school at the uh, Swan Pond. Swan Pond. Oh, that's oh, right. Okay. That Swan was a, that was quite. Yeah. The you were on the right issue. side. And of as that. it yeah. turns out, no, actually, actually, I I'll correct that. I got. The, you lost I, in the Board of Selectmen's I, race I, because I of Swan Pond. I lost because I was in support of uh, renovating the high school. Okay. Oh, and yeah. The main. Uh, Part of that was to build a joint town school library. library. That's right. And the state was, uh, at the time, was in support of it. Yep. But, oh, God. That was a good, that, I remember that. that the was community a was in up and I went out the door. Yep. Pretty I'm, vocal community. In fact, I've gone out the door a couple times based on schools. <laughs> yeah, the, well, the second yeah. time, I remember walking out of town hall with Bob uh, when he was running for selectman, and he lost. Yeah. And that was while we were in the, the whole thing. With the swamp on the swamp yeah. on yeah. Uh, clearly because of yep. the school. Yep. Yeah. Hey, a, a question. Mel, obviously you've moved out of town, so you, yeah. you can't serve any longer. But for all three of you, um, what would you say is the reason why you decided not to run again? I mean, Mike, you've been here nine, Mel, 15, Bob, who just turned <laughs> 25 years, uh, either an elective office or appointed office. So why, why did you decide not to run we'll again? Start. We'll just get on Sure. Um, I'll go first. Nine years is a lot, if you really think about it, right? A lot of people change jobs sooner than nine years. And for me, it's just a phase I am in my life. I think, you know, I, when I got into being on the selectman, uh, now select board, uh, there was a bunch of things I wanted to do, and I feel like I've accomplished them. When we finished up getting in the berry, we have a really good plan in place for bringing storage into town for the first time ever. School uh, project. I think, yep. Yep. Oh, which you deserve a lot of credit. Done, right? oh. We have a good plan now for uh, updating our buildings. Um, there's a lot of stuff in place that, I think nine years is plenty of time. I think it's time to get the younger generation to come in. I'm hoping some moms, younger moms or younger dads, that nothing is wrong with the older guys. Right. Um, <laughs> but it's nine years. Get up, we'll take a shot at somebody, yeah, right? Exactly. I believe, I, I believe you know, honestly, I do believe that there should be term limits. That was my next question. Yeah. And, 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 and it's a good nine segue. Years How do you feel about the time to yeah. get things done that you want to get done and then move on? And that's why I'm moving on. I think nine years is more than enough time. I've created enough chaos. I've also created a lot of good, <laughs> and I think it's time for someone else. And, now and Mel, you can address that because a lot of people, even at the local level, talk about term limits. Yeah. But 
Um, so, you know, how do you feel? Why did you leave and what do you think so about term limits? I probably overstayed my, uh, my stay a little bit, but like Mike, after 15 years, regardless of whether we had moved out of town or not, I wasn't going to run yeah. again this time. Um, and for a lot of the same reasons that, that um, Mike talks about, I think you need to get more people involved. You need to get people invested in the community. And one of the ways of doing that is, is serving on a board, whether it be finance or selectman mm -hmm. or school committee. So, um, you know, and, and I felt that the committee, that w where, the, where the education um, of North Reading students sits right now, where the school system sits, I think it's in a really good place. I think uh, a lot has been accomplished. And, uh, but again, I, I'm not a big term limit fans, but, fan, but I do think that it's something that should be considered. I, I, but you gotta get people to run. I yeah. mean, you can have term limits and if no, you know, look, what, what did we, you know, we get involved in these skirmishes on social media all the time about more people need to run for office. Yeah. So if you have term limits and nobody runs, you don't, you don't, you don't solve anything. Right. You don't have empty seats. Empty seats, exactly. Awesome. I have a follow-up, but I only let Mr. Masseri go, and I would like just a second to follow up on, finish up on. We the, might uh, allow that. I've, I've got, I've grown older over time. <laughs> I'm probably a lot of us have. Oh, a lot of us have. <laughs> None of us are getting uh, the of the best of us. And another, uh, at our next board meeting, I will be turning 77 years Jeez. of age. God bless. Wow. I am not as quick, and my memory is not as good as it used to be. But you're still ahead of most of them, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> combined, but the what brain I, what is I, much what better I have than the other four. Is that the younger generation thinks differently yeah. than I do, and I'm part of the what I'll call the older generation. And I think it would be good to get younger people involved because of that. Yeah. Right? Because I'm not going to be here forever. And next thing you know, uh, things are changing, and you like to have people that uh, are adapted to it and can work with it. You know, and, sure. and I see that in my own kids, and I see that in my grandkids, especially yeah. the way they. You're seeing a significant that. changeover in, in both the board of selectmen and the school committee yeah. over the last yeah. several years. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the school committee now is going to be, if Janine gets reelected. Six She's years. Everyone with more than two right. years of experience on yeah. the school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think the six sad, years. I think the sad part is that there aren't a, a number of people running. Right. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that. Yeah. Will Usually change. it takes a crisis for yeah. people to yeah, become exactly. active and proactive right. and wanting to get involved. Right. So okay. you got to cause something before you leave over the next <laughs> fifteen days or so. <laughs> Mike wanted to follow up. Well, I just have kind of ties. Scrabble with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I have been traveling. But it kind of ties with that, and it goes along with what Sean had kind of opened this about. We volunteer and we do it for free. But it's expensive to live in North Reading. And there's is. reasons why it's expensive. It's yeah. not because us that served wanted to just spend money. You know, we said no to a lot of things for many years. Yep. Sooner or later, you have to say yes, whether you like it or not. Catches up to you. And I think that's why things are so expensive. But I also think that it's a lot harder to be a volunteer these days because it's so expensive. And I think we're at a time where you've got to consider paying some stipend to the school committee members and Not the board of my select board members. <laughs> I, I agree with no, that. No, I do. I really no, do believe that. I, even if it's five thousand dollars, I agree with that. Let me tell you, a lot of towns do it. Tremendous Most amount do. of time. A lot of Most towns communities do. It. do. You'd and be you surprised know, if you do that. And you'd be amazed. I think you'll get a lot more people, younger people, that say, you know what, five thousand dollars would really be helpful towards my taxes. And I'd be willing to give that extra time because you know what most of them are doing? Most of them are working in the evenings, yeah. second jobs. Yeah. And, and you have to and live would, in this town. I would add, if you're going to pay the board of selectmen five thousand, the school committee should get ten because <laughs> they have twice the budget and twice That's the number fine. of employees. And, I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if I would go along with that. By I that, would be I just think the, 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 I think the it issue should be debated. Sense. I think it makes sense. It does. For there to be a stipend to I, any elected official in town. The only other board that's elected is the. Um, CPC is the yep. only other board in town. So you're talking Three 10, elected, right. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 members. I think it does make sense. I and mean, you would generate some um, enthusiasm, some people that are sitting on the sidelines that want to get involved but realize, it. am I going to really do this for nothing? Look, at how many times have we sure. go home and bang our head against the wall on right. various issues? Like, why am I doing this? Well, it's not only that. How many times do we all get phone calls? Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, phone calls, Thursday, emails. meeting, meeting, meeting. And you know what? I don't have a problem doing it, but it certainly would have been a lot nicer to get kicked in the face a few times, knowing that, you know what? At least I'm getting paid a little, little money to do it. Right. And I plan to bring this up on May 6th, my last evening, when I give them a little bit of a, to end my... I, I think you just did ask, it now. <laughs> I want to ask this yeah. new select board that's coming into place on May 7th to consider this for October time meeting. All three of you have been involved so much 
that has happened in the community over the last you know, decade, two decades. You know, what, as you walk away, and it's maybe difficult for you to toot your own heart, but what are you proudest of in terms of your accomplishment or an accomplishment you were involved in with a group and organization since you've been uh, you know, volunteering your time in North Reading? Uh, I'll start this time. I, I think it's just where the North Reading school system stands today. You know, the, build, the new buildings are great and necessary, but I think it's a fact that North Reading, people want to move here for the school system. And I saw that in selling my own house, a young family from Wakefield, two little kids not in the school system yet. You know, one of the things that they heard was how great the school system is here. And you see it all, all over um, the community with people moving in. And I just moved to another community, and they've got a fine school system in Amesbury, but it doesn't compare to what we have here. And, you know, I've already seen some of the things up there, the issues that they're dealing with. So I, I just feel good about the fact that the school system is now, it's highly respected. We've got good people in charge. I know Superintendent Bernard has announced his retirement, but there's a good core of... Um, of administrators below him and working with him, yeah. that I think the school system is a good. I was going to say, well, it goes well beyond the infrastructure. Right, <coughs> it does. Well, I think it does. I mean, those are very. People, that's a very important project. But the curriculum, the right uh, people. Yeah. We got the right people in place. I and believe. This, and the faculty and staff. I mean, yeah. we're, we're really blessed right now. Right. With a very. A lot of long-term staffs been yeah. here for many years. Bob, what do you think? I I think I'm most proud of the uh, uh, dealing with projects that brought Town Hall into the uh, 20th, 21st century. Yeah. And uh, uh, before I was a selectman, I uh, I got involved with what we call an IT committee. Oh, I remember right. that. Yeah. And right. Right. Uh, one of the first things we did was we did a uh, inventory, and we uh, also talked to our, all our department heads about what the issues were. There was no network. Yeah. And there was, uh, we found a Windows 3.1 computer being used. <laughs> it, was like, and, it was like from the yeah. uh, Stone Ages, it's, yeah. Right, so you the had- black and orange screen. <laughs> you had that situation. <laughs> just shook all the time. <laughs> and then uh, the introduction of Munis after we got together. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. a big one, huge, yeah. huge. Significant yeah. because that's boards big. had tried before in fact, there was a member of the board that was part of a, a committee, and they uh, probably, I don't know how they get around certain uh, rules, <laughs> that Tom <laughs> bought the software, and just, they never got it to I work. Couldn't, couldn't implement it. Right. 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 I don't right. remember right. the name of it. I don't either, software, but I remember couldn't that. Couldn't implement it. Yeah. But they never got it to oh. work. And uh, the hiring of Liz... Yeah, great point. Finance director, significant thing. I can remember the screening committee sitting there, yeah, yeah. listening to all the candidates, and she came to that meeting so prepared. And uh, I give her a lot of credit for getting was, things moving and getting that in place. She's, she's really, she's, she's really great. I, I'm proud of that. Other yeah. things that I got involved with was bailing the uh, building committee of the rebuild of the police station. Oh yeah. Was, when they didn't have enough money, and yep. it went on and on and on, and then I finally got enough funds that's to a, get that done. That's a great point. I think everybody sitting here, all five of us actually, but these three yep. guys in particular, yep. they got things done. You know, Absolutely. and Bob just said it. Look, there were problems. There were issues. Absolutely. With the, with the police station building, with right. the bat shelter. The with high the, school. But high, we got high school, done. Yeah. Right. And that's the, the important thing. People can go back and forth. I remember people in the audience saying, oh, it needs more study, you have to, what about this, what about that? Hey, sometimes you have to move forward, and you guys did that. You guys got things Absolutely. done, you know. Michael? Well, I think most people would think, I'm going to say J.T. Berry, right? Yeah. Getting that J.T. Berry uh, acquisition completed and getting the polio. But for me, it really wasn't that. Um, there was two other things that really stuck out in my mind. And first of all, it was the seniors. You know, when I, when I was running for board, when you were running for the board, and when you ran for the board, all of us, how many times do you hear we got to do more for seniors, right? right? Yeah. And now you, you become really one. Don't. And <laughs> now you want to do something about it. <laughs> no, he's right. We really yeah, never no. did anything no, wow so true. factor so for true. our seniors. Yeah. And I, that's kind of my one regret leaving that we didn't have more wow factor yeah. for them. But that transportation and getting that grant and getting transportation at some level for our seniors and our disabled vets, I, I'm more proud of that. And the other thing that people probably don't know about is that. You know, you talk about what are the largest expenses besides salary. What was always the other 
huge expense that we, we addressed it. Health insurance. Oh, health insurance. Oh, uh, yeah. But we came up with a creative yep. way, yep. and I'm more proud of that than I am J.T. Berry. And people don't even have a clue what a wonderful benefit we have created in savings that we've created in a way to manage the health care costs in the future. That's, that's one of those win-win things. It's well, a win-win. You know, it's a win for the town, and it's a win, win for, for the, the employees. employees, too. Michael, they maybe, maybe talk a little bit about that. And, and, well, one thing I'll say, it's not, like, it's not like savings. It prevented us, it, it saved us from having to cut employees and cut services in town because of the money we saved yeah. on health insurance. At the time, the Board of Selectmen And Mike, the way that. you approached it, uh, you thought it was important and needed support, and you asked me to meet and have coffee, and uh, I listened to the pitch, and I thought it was a great idea, and then I think we okay. managed to get Oh, you, you, yeah, you, was on you board helped early. me get yeah. the goal line. Yeah. Right? What, did I mean, you make you an offer? Did you make you an offer you couldn't refuse though, Bob, or, or what? I mean, was it a no. was it a good offer? Or? <laughs> no, I had nothing to do with offers. <laughs> no, I know. People don't realize that we were looking at 10, 12, oh, I know. 15% that, percent that right increases here, yeah. in health care costs yeah. when they implemented this. So yeah. yep. that's a significant, what was that? I forget how it much was it was. A, every you percent. Know, it, it made a lot of sense, and yet it was a big risk. It was. Yeah. The first yeah. Right. Right. Oh, the first sure. that have adapted the approach. It gave everyone a lot of credit for having and the beauty the is if it, to yeah. go forward with it and try it out. If yeah. it fails, you two guys will be gone. Well, <laughs> but think about it too. You have to remember. That's why they're leaving now. <laughs> you know, insurance is only 70, 30, it's a 730 split. Right. You have to give 30% of the credit to well, the Well, what employees. are the numbers? Yeah. So we they took about, that leap of faith. They we're did. talking about 730 split. We're talking about the high increase in percentages. But put it, put it, what's the budget for health insurance for this community? How much is it? I forget now. Well, you know, so, you know, what, not to the dollar, but what's... How much does a town need to pay in health insurance on an annual basis? Now, I think it gives people a better perspective of what the magnitude of that cost is. Sure. I, I, I'm going to answer it this way because I don't have the exact numbers and I don't want to no, throw no. out the exact numbers. But I'll put it this way. In past years, we have averaged a double-digit increase annually, okay, which has forced our employees to change carriers. Yeah. It's changed, uh, required yeah, us to do. back and forth between carriers. More than once. Yeah. yeah. More yeah. than once. Changed us to do um, what they called... Um, not value engineering, but they, there was another, uh, we had to take away some of the benefits. Yep. We had to increase some of their out-of-pocket expenses. Yeah, your yeah. co-pays, yeah. your deductible, co -pay, right. a little bit. Um, so every year, double digits, very hard to plan. So now, this past year and the year prior, we're, we have a single digit. And this year, we're going to be budgeting 4.5% this year. It, for, but for we're, talk, we're not talking... Thousands, no, that's several millions. We're talking millions. Yeah, several, several millions, millions of dollars. dollars. Millions of dollars. Yeah. For a budgetary right. amount yeah. for health insurance. Yep. Yep. So when you consider that with the increases that you were facing before you did this, yeah. it's And what we have done, we've also created a, uh, a little slush fund for when that rainy day comes. When we get another increase in hit rainy day fund is better than a slush <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it's but <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Sean, I, got a, I got a question yeah is there and this is maybe hard just to come up with right away but is there any issue that caused either one of you or any one of you sleepless nights i mean is, what, <laughs> no, I mean, what issue would you say generated that kind of apprehension or that I, I, I got about five of them okay i'm just curious the, the high school uh, middle school project definitely there's no question about that and the only way i got calmed down was when you and i would uh, break into this uh, construction project on saturday morning show you there was progress being made yeah it was, well, it was progress. progress it was the guy with the small paintbrush oh, yeah. Painting oh, yeah, right. oh yeah oh yeah he was there he was there all the time all the time um the whole um mcas park thing that that i got more phone calls emails from uh, frantic unhappy parents about that um, than I think anything. And believe it or not, in, this, in, in hindsight, this seems really dumb. Remember that whole controversy, Jerry, about um, kids taking band courses and yeah. they couldn't get... Grade point average. Yeah, the grade point average was punished because you didn't have yep. honors yep. Um, classes in that. That was the third one that I got a ton of phone calls on that and had neighbors involved. And I mean, those, those were really the three that, that I remember that I just it kept me up at night. Well, how about you? I'm kind of easy going and don't get too excited <laughs> That's about true. a lot of things. I've seen it so, twice, Bob, I think. So apparently, uh, if, what gets me during sleep is I work on solving problems, uh, yeah. whether they're yeah. home problems or car problems <laughs> or, or school problems or whatever. It, it would be in, a, in the form of night, but right. I never got, you know, they could be kind of 
long crisis, and, you know, I could go <laughs> home. That's and a talk good quality. Mike, how about you? Anything that caused you? Well, you know, what I used to do for a living when I was. Uh, when I was working full time, uh, well, work just working. Working. when you're working, period. Uh, Besides being on a golf you know, course, what I used to do was so uh, high intensity, a high ops tempo that I sleep like a baby no matter what. But I will say there was one subject, and I'm sure Bob maybe brushed over it because you know nothing bothered him. But that whole water situation and what we were uh, going to yeah. do for long term yeah, water first round was a real. Real tough one, because we were down a long road with MWRA. Mm -hmm. And you know why, and a lot of people don't understand this, is we had no other choice. We had a letter on in 2014, August of 2014 from Andover saying, hey, thanks for shopping with us for all these years, but you're all right, right, right in yeah. 2020. Yeah. And Which is what most of our water was See coming from. I mean, our wells were not producing so the type of here water. Here we have that, a community you know? with 16,000 people in it, and we don't have a water solution for them. We were forced to get, and we were thankful that we get Reading, the town of Reading, to step up to help us, and the MWRA to step up to offer us an opportunity to join them. That kept me up at night. Other than that, I sleep like a baby yeah. pretty much. But there yeah. are some people issues. People think that they bother me. Too, regarding, if I was you know, regarding water, I'm sitting across the table with uh, one of the end of it. Uh, selectman, I'm not going to mention. No, let's not name. mention his name. I was <laughs> and, with them. <laughs> and he's screaming and yelling at me. You know. Really? But I mean. What? It didn't bother me. Right. So I didn't have to scream and yell back at him. He just had a vent. He thought that we were making uh, our water rate was lower than theirs. I don't know where he got that yeah. idea. Yeah. No, he thought we were making a lot of money off of our rate yeah. because yeah. we charged so much more. Uh, we, we basically charged double what we pay from Andover, Andover but yeah. they have to understand. Once we get the water to our town line by pipes, it's we expensive to rent yeah. pipes. Sure. Sure. Chlorination. Sure. Right, all that stuff, all the infrastructure that are wrong with it. And we had to, we have to bump it up. So they thought we were all profit on that. They didn't yeah. understand. Yeah. So as you, as you sit here, is there one, one project, one issue, or one regret that you have that you wish you could have gotten something done or done something differently than what ended up happening? I'll start that, uh, as you know, I've been working on the water with Steve, and uh, even though we have an agreement with Andover, we haven't got state approval because we have to file our DEIR and our FEIR. Mm -hmm. And the FEIR can't be filed until we can identify a location where we're going to put the uh, chlorine injection. Right. Now, on Central Street, it's not a problem. We own the land. Right, right. But on uh, Main Street, it is a problem. We've been talking to the uh, Martin's Pond uh, Baptist Church, and uh, they seem to be kind of reluctant. And uh, even though we have a right to take the land by eminent domain because it's the water, I don't think anyone is really up to that. And there are a number right. of other locations that we could put the chlorine injection system. I had hoped before I got off the board that that would have been settled. It doesn't look like it will be, although miracles can happen. There's well, still a couple of weeks left. Right. But it wasn't through lack of effort, though, that's no. for sure. Right. No, absolutely not. Uh, even though the school committee wasn't perfect, will never be perfect, except when Jerry was on it. Um, and the school that's what Jerry says, too. Right. <laughs> and the school department's not perfect. I honestly, I don't have any one specific regret. I, I think, um, you know, the one regret I have, and you know, again, I think Jerry can relate to this, although he always blames me, is losing my temper a few times during meetings. Um, never good. Never good. Um, well, you know. I wish I was more even yeah, keeled I, like Bob I think, here. I think four of the five, five of us have lost <laughs> our right, temper during say, a meeting. We all could take <laughs> lessons from Bob and being more even keeled oh, yeah. no, and, and cool, calm, and collected. I, I think Mel's yeah. definitely the statesman. The <laughs> yes, definitely the no statesman doubt. here. I, I said this when Mel last at Mel's last school committee meeting. He brings such a passion to everything that he's involved in. That I think that's the, the result sometimes is it boils over. Well, this guy does and, too. I yeah. mean, and I'm that's Italian. Why, what do you want? The first, no, 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 the no, first time I, we met for lunch, I thought we were going to go in the parking lot. And <laughs> I can describe you. Mel can go from zero to 100 and back to zero in like moments. Yeah. yeah. Michael's a bull. He'll come in, 
It's just Push you up against the wall, right? And then it'll, and then it'll back off. And then he backs yeah. off, but it takes a long it, time. Yeah. But the only that's one okay. I saw challenging Don't take anyone, it so personal. <laughs> it's the guy to my right. I've only, oh, that's right. I've only been in three for this We won't, we won't get into that one. Yeah, that's right. So what oh. about you? Any regret? Any regrets? I have one huge one. One huge one. And um, it's sad that I'm ending the board knowing that this is one regret I'll have to live with is PBD court. Right? Oh, uh, yeah. It's embarrassment. I, a, honestly, yeah. we have failed. Yeah, it goes great. back to the senior issue, it, it right? It does. It, we failed. We but failed aren't you trying a now? Isn't there a plan in place to... Yeah. Listen, it shouldn't have been my problem to deal with on the board. That's my personal opinion. And I don't mean to be harsh to my people that sat in my position beforehand. But that was lost a long time ago. But yeah. you know what? Shame on me for the, my nine years not for trying to find... And I did try to find a way. I brought uh, Secretary Ashen. He went over there with me. He brought his staff in. And even the state can't really help us. Yeah. But you know what? I do hope and I believe with uh, Rich Wellner coming on the board, I know he has a strong interest mm -hmm. in us, Dean, as yeah. I pray. I give him a lot of credit. Hopefully he'll take this ball and run with it. And I, and I really do hope this new board You know, you know Mike, I think it. we all have to share in the guilt over that, the yeah. blame over that, because for Mel and I, and, and even for the board of selectmen, we put so much into the young people, so much into yeah. the school system, that that kind of got left behind and you're right it should be something that should be in the top of the list right should now be. it uh, should be to, you know we did resolve. right by the schools did we do perfect no no you never can but we haven't done anything over there yeah, i agree and you know and i welcome the community if you have never been there take a five minutes before you go to the ball game and walk through there try to go through that and picture yourself on a winter day mm -hmm. icy snowy rainy day going to your home of 500 square feet yeah. right it's not easy yep. and now we're asking us yeah. and it's it's in it's almost like a staircase down yeah. there too if you see it in terms it's a of tiered the, the structure yep it's tiered and it's it, it, it's not it's now we I do, do, we like, can do better we the can one do better. I like the location of it I think it's good to be in the middle of your young kids and the by and I know a lot of them like to come out and watch the ball games and but I'd like to move tough. the location to someplace more serene and then put a hockey rink <laughs> where the senior housing is. Right. Another hockey <laughs> rink guy. Another hockey I, rink I guy. could care less what goes there as long yeah. as they're not right. living like that. Right. And I'm new. praying that this new but, board. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I know community. Rich Warner, he's it's a champion time. Uh, it's of time. the seniors, yeah. too. So you know, Michael, I that think mental. that because it uh, was run and controlled by the state, yeah. our guild is not beating up on the state over Did, the issue. Yeah. We're doing yeah. something. Yeah. You know, I think doing that's the... Yeah. Yep. Sean, I got a quick question. That's go ahead, Jerry. Um, well, you seem to be moderating. <laughs> you don't know your right from your left, but you know, you're doing a good job of moderating. But how, I want to play each that one best. of you, how did your family, particularly your wives, support you, your spouses support you and not support you or discourage you or encourage you over all the years that you were doing this? Because I know how much you were out of the house and how much you were out. I mean, that's the only reason I ever ran was just to get out of the house. But for you guys, I'm just curious as to what kind of support you got from home. Yeah. I mean, you got to admit, it's really the family that bears the brunt of us volunteering. Yeah. And you, admit, you do miss kids' events in the evening. Yeah. You miss evening dinners with your family. You miss going off to parties, birthday parties. It's a huge Those are the plus things. What about the negative? <laughs> they, <laughs> they, <laughs> they bear the brunt. And my, my wife's an absolute saint. Yeah. For not only when I had my previous job, I was, I was around the world traveled around the world for almost 20 years and you know I didn't even know where the hood school was when we moved here uh, I was probably here three years before I figured out where it was and now she's dealing with me with the board so I'm not so sure though she would be the first one to probably tell you that separation is pretty good but she's gonna learn here pretty quick I'm gonna be around a lot more <laughs> she may be begging me to go back well I um my wife was highly supportive the funny thing about my wife you guys know she's very quiet very reserved, calm, cool, collected, she would get more angry at things than I did. Yeah. She'd be Especially like, people were critical of her, right? How oh, can people right. say that right. about you? Yeah. Do they know how much time you spend on this? And That's a blah, 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 blah. She was highly supportive, but I agree with Mike. You do miss, you miss things. And, a lot. You know, sometimes, sometimes you'd say, look, I'm going to put this school committee thing aside for a couple weeks. I'm going to visit my daughter. We're going to this or... Because you, know, you, you, you really did that. I missed, I think, four Did you ever meetings. text you during a meeting? Yes. Really? Oh, my yeah. wife never did. Never? But your wife did. My wife would text me and say, <laughs> you know, you're really yelling or when something like When I get home, like she certainly let me know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, she was always very supportive, though. And my kids were, as Mike said, it, it takes a little toll on the yeah. kids, too. My wife the, the same. kids were supportive. Absolutely. Yeah. Bob, how about you? I support from home. I, she was always supportive. Uh, when my kids were growing up, she didn't work. 
she was there with the kids, and it was a good thing because I was on an airplane every week. Oh, yeah. There was a period of time I had a, uh, I was on a school committee, and we met on Monday nights. Uh, I had a plant in Puerto Rico, and I fly there every week on Tuesday morning and oh, come God. home on Thursday. And, wow. and she'll <laughs> tell you the story. Well, if the weather was going to be bad, he left early, he left late, he came home late, <laughs> early, you know. And uh, uh, she was supportive of all of that, and I was work doing work for the town at the time. Yep. And then when it came college time, she started working. And that work was important to help pay the tuition sure. bills. Yeah. And then uh, more recently, she just uh, retired herself a year ago. Nice. And then they called her back, and she's working a couple afternoons a week to help them out. Yeah. But yeah. I think what's important is uh, I left her this morning at 9 o'clock. From, and until I left, they were still working on it. She's uh, on the Friends of the Council on Aging. Yeah, and they're yeah. doing ready the for yard, yard sale. Oh, that's right. And they're, they're doing all the paperwork. So that's she's right. doing as much now as in terms of time mm. as I was doing in the early yeah. days. What about you two? I'm not sure yeah. I should be on TV because my wife thinks I'm still in the school. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when I leave the house on Monday, <laughs> so, you so still go out. Of <laughs> I, I, so, so what I can say about her, she's been totally tolerant and yeah. supported me for everything that I've I, done I, and I, continues to. Yeah. In response to Mike, i, I got to say, my wife never, ever, ever an issue. In fact, this last time around, a year ago, she said, why aren't you running? You're going to miss it. Just do it, you know. If you don't, you're going to be sitting on your fat butt watching more television than you already do. <laughs> she was right about that. But she was always supportive of it. Now, the only, and, and to go along with what Mel said, she paid no attention to what was going on in town politics unless somebody criticized me. And then she would go out of her mind. And I mean, literally, she would go out I of her mind. The same way. And, yeah. and that was the only time. I mean, and, you know, that's something we all had to get used to was the yeah. criticism. John? I, yeah, no. Uh, the first term, no, she was very supportive. Second term, you know, she saw what we all dealt with in terms of the middle school, high school project. And, um, yeah, similar to your wife, similar to your wife. If someone criticized me, you know, we could take it. It comes yeah, from the territory. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You've got to let it roll. Right. Um, but with her, no, I, I, God forbid, if she comes across a couple of people. Yeah. Around, <laughs> to this day. <laughs> it's um, true. Really. I've had to keep my like wife she, she yeah. say. making comments on Facebook and oh. Uh, oh, letters yeah. to the editor in oh, yeah. a hundred times. The best thing I have going is my, my wife has a different last name work. than I do. Yeah. So when she makes comments, a lot of times people don't know it's her. That's the great thing. Yeah, I different different good. first name, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different first name. Now with being home, well, she kind of wishes that I was still on the board so I could get out. Yeah. So we have some separation. Yeah. But, no, yeah, I mean, that, that's what it comes down to. I mean, yeah. very supportive yep. until they you know, yep. get criticized. But it comes with the territory. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. We've got three members of the board of selectmen here. I just kind of want to say that um, people don't associate them all the time with the middle school, high school building project. But Mike and Bob and Sean, all three of these guys, um, were as intimately involved yeah. as anybody was on the school committee. Sean was a member of the secondary school building committee, and Bob and Mike They're at were all the meetings, all those, day one. all those emergency meetings. All we the had. meetings. I mean, so the, the, you know that that project would have never I agree. been completed without the support of the board of selectmen. I, I mean, agree. I think that's. Sometimes they don't take enough credit for it. They take credit for other things, but they don't take enough credit for that. <laughs> I, I agree 100%. And I'll say this, going back to the Batchelder, same thing. Yep. Board of Selectmen were 100% behind it at a very controversial time in town here when we had that huge debate between Swan Pond and, and the Batchelder. So. You know, well, aren't we all very happy that we did middle school, high school project when we did, even though with all the pain that it came with, if you take a look at some oh, of the, the schools costs. that are being proposed right now or being built right uh. now, uh, I just saw last week the, the Lowell High School project, which they're putting downtown. This is a whole controversy, putting right. it off a better site, cleaner site. But it's in excess right now of $350 million. Wow. Granted, it's a larger district. Yeah. But still, what we got for $122 million, yeah. I think, is... They're just, building people a, don't realize what a bargain we right. got. They're building a uh, high school, middle school. They're planning to build a high school, middle school, uh, the Pentucket district. It's $150 something million. And it's smaller than our school. We would have been up around 170, 180, maybe even higher if yeah. we built it today. And I think we all agree that, yeah. in retrospect, it was 100% necessary to replace both timing. schools. To replace both schools, yeah. absolutely. And do you remember when we were, when we were in the real heat of the battle, we'll call it for the lack of a better term, 
all of us thought, geez, you know, the vote's going to be close. Right. But this community came out yeah, overwhelming. Yeah, big time. And then when we sadly had to go back oh, for more the money, 15 million, yeah. they still came back equally as supportive. It's supportive. Understanding. It's 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 it. You know, this, that project would had so many moving parts <laughs> on a site, by the way, that is not an easy site Awful to build. Awful site, yeah. And well, for the up, folks, is it sliding down the hill? <laughs> for the record, folks, <laughs> trust me, that building is not sliding down the no, hill it's not, no. ever. Um, but Mike's 100 percent right. They came out. You got to thank but the it, But again, it was it was the thought process of everyone involved, all well, you gentlemen sitting here with me, about how the community was going to be educated as to why right, the project why, was necessary right. and how everyone was going to benefit if yeah. the project went forward. Yeah. Know, so it's an education. It, it's like you educating Bob on the new health insurance plan, right? Yep. Once you take the time to educate whether it's one or two people yep. to get their support, or in this sense, a larger a larger community, if you take the time to educate them, give them an opportunity, we were everywhere. Yeah. I mean, we were at athletic everywhere. events, we yeah. were at open houses, we yeah. were everywhere. PTOs, and PTAs. Right. The open houses, it how was, many? It was, was sold, it was the education that was done. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm proud of the time and effort I spent on working on the financing part of oh, it. Oh, that's right. Yes. You spent a ton and of how that. Uh, we finally made a decision to mortgage it like a home oh, buyer. Right, right, right. So that everybody that moved in town downstream for right. the 25 years yeah. right. would right. pay their share. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, that was a great idea. And it saved a lot of people on an annual basis. But just to give you an idea, at the average homeowner, uh, we were at around eight hundred dollars on a tax rate, and with the addition, it ended up being about a thousand dollars for the average yeah, home close to, a thousand, to yeah. support that school. Yeah. Yeah. And the tremendous number of people that voted in support. Yeah, of that, yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. The support was overwhelming for the project, and I'm glad we were able to deliver. <laughs> that you was know, beautiful. I, 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 I was here thirty-four years. And Mike and I sacrificed town, a new town hall over that, right? That's, That's right. right. Yeah. I, That's that what I'm was, saying. You know, I was just gonna say I've been I've been here thirty I lived here thirty four years, raised my kids here. I, I really like the community, love the community, and uh, two things that I hope to see uh, in the future are sewer coming down twenty eight, and a new town hall. Also, uh, uh, yeah, a community center. You know, there's a lot of nice community centers up in the uh, oh, yeah. Ainsley now. There's a lot of nice. Mm -hmm. ones. Seabrook's got a beautiful one. You're just up uh, running yeah. by there the other day, and uh, but I think if you get sewer in this town. This town right. is going to take off like no tomorrow in terms we'll have of plenty money commercial to pay, and retail. To pay for a new town hall. I agree, Mel. And it's like if you take a look at and part of the reason why we ended up here was schools and just proximity to everywhere Everything. Oh, that's you a go. great Off location. of 93, yeah. 95. Yeah. You can get to 490, you can get to New Hampshire, you can exactly. get to Maine. Yeah. It's just the ease of access. So if sewer comes down 28, you know, it, it's been talked about for probably 50 years in this community, but it's probably another 10 to 12 years out. But once it does, I, I think this, this community just explodes. I do uh, you, you, Yep. By the Cut way, we the did uh, recently Walmart. have a meeting with Andover. Ooh, there was a period of time that we couldn't meet with them because of their gas crisis. Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. to remind them about the sewer. Good. So uh, Good. The, yeah, I, hope, I, hope I hope the new board keeps that I do too. that, I do that too. in focus, yeah, so it isn't forgotten. Right. Yeah, you right. know, they have changed in the administration too. Yeah. Right? They have changed in boards oh. of selectmen and some of that. We can have, be easily uh, forgotten yeah. some of those commitments they 50 made. 50 years of experience stepping aside here. Minimum 50 years of experience. I was elected well, this, this, Never mind everything. There's, there's, over, us, there's I, over a century, I think. Of, it's, it's close to 100 years, there's five guys five here. Guys right here. It's now. amazing. And there's a lot. This guy right this here. This guy's got about half of them. Yeah. He does. <laughs> yes, <it's, laughs> Sorry, Bob. I like, had to say. What I say, oh, well, 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 when I came on as a, as a freshman board of selectmen member, right? Bob, Bob was my mentor. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, his brain just works differently yeah. than anyone I've ever met in my life. Yeah. And Bob, people don't know this, but essentially at that time, Bob was, in my opinion, this may be controversial, but I'm going to say it. Bob was like the acting town administrator. He was. At that time. Yes. Right. Thankfully, we have someone in place right now, Michael Gilberto, who has really yeah. stepped in and right. done that job tremendously. But Bob really was the person from the board as the chair for those years who really had to keep moving this town forward because it wasn't under the prior administration. I, agree. I credit you a lot. You know, Bob. one year when that. I was on the finance committee and the uh, uh, finance director left, oh, I remember doing the budget. Yeah. Al, <laughs> I remember, Al, right? Well, Al. who yeah. was there? It was a void, Bob, that you filled that yeah. in, as a volunteer. So right. No one understands yeah. in this. He retired from being an engineer, but he had his own business. But there he is 
in the morning, noon, and night, the guy was at town hall. Not because he wanted to be, because he had to be and felt, you know, he had to do this for the community because there was such a void there. That's the one thing I'm not sure we've made clear, too, when Mike's talking about paying elected officials and everything. It, it, people have to understand, it's not just going to one meeting every right. two weeks on right. a Monday night. There is so much more so much. of your personal time involved, but so many other subcommittees, so many other events that you have to attend. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just sometimes out of control, to be yeah. honest with you. Which brings me to the one question I, I had written down that I haven't asked. Did you I, type that out or write just, that out? <laughs> I you know he didn't use a computer to type it. Um, he wasn't getting the emails about this meeting either. <laughs> the, uh, d how do you guys define or see the line that separates you as an elected official from the administration? Sometimes I've seen over the years that people don't know where that line is, that they cross over that line and they're either trying to take on too much responsibility or get involved in, in matters that should be the responsibility of the town administrator, the school superintendent, or whatever. I mean, how do you how do you view that? And it, I always think that's something for new members coming in that they should know and understand. I think uh, my view of it's been, uh, especially with Michael Gilberto, is that he is in charge of running the town. We're in charge of providing various direction. Yep. And. Uh, Therefore, it's not a good idea to get involved with the employees, with the exception of him. Yeah. You know, unless he asks you to. I think that's the way it's designed. Be. Now, right. I could see the situation where you had a, a uh, town administrator who wasn't doing the job. Right, right. And by the way, uh, Greg Balconis had the skill set. I was going to mention big, names. He had, a big, <laughs> he had a big problem, and that was he... Uh, he looked too far away. He, he never got far, involved right? with yeah. the community. Yeah. You know, and I met every, I created the idea of meeting Wednesday morning, and we started at 8.15, and he was always late, so yeah. we went to, I was flexible, yeah. 8.30, and he was always late. That's, that's you know, he used to blame the traffic. Come on, I, I had an office up there, yeah. you know. And you, I didn't mention this earlier. I got involved with the Board of Selectmen, after I sort of retired and we got this company going where I had all kinds of flexibility. Yeah. Only once in a while there'd be an emergency yeah. that I had to break loose and deal with the emergency. But generally I made my own time and that was important. Yeah. Uh, having that flexibility, Michael, you probably can say the same thing. It can be a fine line at times. Well, yeah. you know, one of the things that's a chair, and Bob was chair for many years, as we all know, and you were chair yep. several times, and Jerry yourself, yep. Sean, you yep. served as chair uh, three three years, maybe a couple years. Um, and how many times have we talked about chain of command to our our uh, members? Right. Chain of command, right. well, and it was did. hard. <laughs> Bob was right. Chain yeah. of command was difficult when we didn't have a town administrator that was as active or involved as we needed them to be, yeah. which caused us, yes, many of us to step over the line. But because that's many people that volunteer are very passionate, and I know this future boards on both sides. I'm going to be passionate, but the chain of command thing is very important. Yeah, I, I always felt that as a, as a member that you, you went through the chair. If you wanted to get right. to something on our side, town yeah. hall, to the town administrator, you go through the chair instead of burdening the town administrator. It could be five members of us yeah. knocking on his door, calling him, emailing him yeah, constantly. But it, it, I think that's and the proper way to do it. infiltrates through down lower than the town administrator and go into apartment heads. Right. And, and right. you can't no, have that. Well, I think, say from, from, I think one of the issues, you know, from day one, despite how passionate I was and how loud I can be about things, I always knew to go through the superintendent. And I've seen new members come on and they're, first thing they're doing, they're calling a principal. Yeah. They're calling, uh, yeah. they're calling a teacher. They, and they I, just I don't know where the line is. You can't do that. You can't. Yeah. You, 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 you're overstepping. And I think that's, that's critical. And another factor, is social media now? Oh God! The board yeah. members yeah. on both yeah. sides yeah. on right. social media yeah. has taken it to a whole new level. That's right. Yeah. In the community in social media. Yeah. And I will say, I know I didn't say it in the, in the beginning, but social media and I see the the feedback that people put on social media is another reason why I felt it was time to step away because there's a lot of opinions out there, and I think they're all good. And I think no, I don't think they're all good. No, the, I don't think they're all good. good. They're There's entitled to their ones. opinion, but they're right. not all good. Right. But those right. people need to step up. And you know, you, you see, and it frustrated me too, and it still does to a certain extent, but you come to realize that most of those, unfortunately, they're not formed. 
Yeah, they're not informed. They, it's right. a gut reaction. Well, they heard a rumor. Personal. They heard a rumor. They yeah. heard a story. And my, kid, my kid came home there. from school and told right. me that's they're, hard. They're creating the social media firestorm. Right. Like, there doesn't need to be one, right? right. You know, and it, it, it's terrible because terrible. it does it, it does a disservice it to the hurts community, the, situation the towns, usually. the schools, whatever the issue may be. Yeah, and I, it's, I'm not it's a fan. Getting worse, not getting better. Right. This is another factor. Well, you're right. Like it's social excited. time for me to go. Yeah. The other thing too that I wanted to point out, and uh, Bob, I'm not sure if you were responsible for this or whether it was Marcy Bailey, but again. Board of Selectmen need to take credit for creating the finance planning team. Oh, that's right. And yeah. that is something. You have to credit Marcy for that. I, and I will uh, credit Marcy for that. Absolutely. That's because a great, great. I don't think there are a lot of towns that do that. No. No, there aren't. So people know once a month, and we've said this before, but the chairman from the Board of Selectmen, chairman from the school committee, vice chairman from both yep. committees, town administrator, superintendent of schools, the finance directors for both sides, and the finance committee, chair, chair and vice, and vice chair. chair. Uh, meet and sit down and talk primarily about budgetary items, but other items as well. And it's created at least uh, an exchange of information. Uh, you know, it's a truth they say. It, it yeah, really it, is. It's a, a huge, huge accomplishment yep. that, uh, that I hope it continues. I hope I with, with guys like Bob and Mike Levin and Mel Levin, I, I just hope it continues on because it's very, yeah. very important. This, this now, year? I, yeah, I'll tell know. you something. I had a discussion with Michael Gilberto. Uh, being concerned that that was a good thing and that uh, I told he had to make sure it continued because you can't, yeah. you understand? Yeah. I don't know what you've said yeah. to him. But, but you, you also codified kind yeah. of what goes no, absolutely. on, right? Yeah. So this year we spent time book, documenting. Basically. Yeah, document we how documented how we did yeah, certain things, how we do revenue yeah. expense plans. We started putting policies and procedures out there so as the new people come in and they may not have as much experience as us, they have a documentation that work well. Okay. It's I so valuable. You see the communities that don't have something like this, and then sure it's oh, yeah. budget time, or at if they're a town meeting community, you get the boards that are fighting on town meeting. They're fighting or, at town meeting, yeah. Right. And uh, not that we didn't have our issues, right, but, but oh, we most did it. finance planning team meetings would right. have issues. Right. You know. But I you, you don't the, see uh, the disputes at town meeting floor because it gets, for the whole year. That's why we don't have meeting, overrides. Right. right. Continuously. I think the value the of it was that all the committee heads jointly get a feeling for what the issue exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. You right. know, it's not something that any one of the boards has created. It's right. there. Right. And right. they've worked together. Right. To You're not accusing someone of hiding the ball. No, that's right. not the right. true right. number. Yep. No, you, you vet it all out. So everyone, again, it's it's an educational process yeah. and everyone can get comfortable to whatever that number is that yeah. you have to divide. Some of it depends on the personalities, but the other thing too is that the, I, the superintendent and the town administrator got to be they in respect for each other. Right, exactly. Regular, they could yeah. pick up the phone and talk to right. each other about yeah. issues and, and resolve things. And I think that and came same out with the that, finance right, director for the town and, yeah. for the, and for the school committee. Yeah. We, they, they work together, yeah. you know, not yeah. just at the finance planning meeting, but for the whole during the whole year. I heard some so. good news. I heard that NORCAM is considering making this a 16-part series. <laughs> <laughs> so we could probably go on for a couple more hours here. No, no, we with the five of us, we probably could, but yeah. I just... You know, on behalf of the community, I want to thank you three gentlemen for all the time and the effort. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know, not only is it volunteerism, but these three men and their families, the, the philanthropic effort that they put towards this oh. community, it's, I couldn't even guess the amount of dollars that these yeah. three families, the Mosseri family, the Webster family, and the Prisco family, has donated to this community. And um, the community owes a debt of gratitude. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, you, you've taken this community to a new level I'm sure it will continue with the new makeups of the both the school committee and the select board. It will continue to move forward, but um, you have laid the groundwork, you built the foundation, you're starting to put the first and second stories on, and uh, you've given a path to continue the progress of this community. So on behalf of the community, I wish to thank the three of you. Thank yeah, you. I, I echo that. Well, I, I think mean, the I thanks think should go back along to you, you two, two also, exactly. Who, who did a very similar thing. Right. And may have decided to move on oh. uh, and i know you have been still involved in town activities <laughs> a little, little so, degree yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but this, I, but this I is your the school these, project won't go away well right. no, well well we can't get the final meeting <laughs> <laughs> well, we Jerry, can never have a final meeting yeah. no, <laughs> how do you so, how do you do the minutes? last minute yeah. you three have devoted count uh, countless hours and i know mel uh before becoming a board member was so involved in youth sports and Different projects. I mean, that the the softball field and the practice field. I mean, Mel not only did he lead the charge 
and raise the money to get those things done. But he took money out of his own pocket. Right. He, he's done that, done that many, many times. Most times we don't know about it. Right. I'd have done it myself, but I don't have any money. <laughs> uh, and and it's Mike, the billable rates, Jerry. I mean, Mike, I don't even want to. It's not to, the billable rates. You have to send out the bill. <laughs> I mean, Mike, starting with the, the flagpole and the flag in front of the school and, the, yeah. and so many other things. Uh, yeah, cool. Just uh, the contribution he made when we were having those Saturday meetings. Oh, the and donuts and the, the bagels. Bringing the bagels and the donuts yeah. and the coffee. That was so the most we important the fuel. contribution. Yeah. Yeah. We needed the fuel yeah. to push the stuff. I just, I, I just want to thank, I mean, the number of years Bob put in, I don't, I don't understand it, how someone put that many years in. So I just, I hold the highest respect for Bob and all he's done for this community and the time he's taken away from his family. Yeah. Although he still got to go out to Seattle and see his grandkids, I know, quite often. But uh, I just, I respect the hell out of what Bob did. Yeah, uh, my wife community. and I just uh, returned from Aruba a week there uh, on Saturday. Nice. And, and did you next sail? month. Uh, what? Did you see it while you were down there? Yes. Good, good. Just one evening. All right, all right. We made right. sure he kept his phone on, though. Yeah. And, and unlike and, Mike uh, and I, people still like Bob. Yeah. <laughs> That's you throw okay. Mel in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if there's I'll, anyone to thank, it's my wife for yeah. putting up off for all of this. Holy it certainly is a, we all get to thank our better half. And because exactly. without them, but I don't it know certainly is be. a position where I we're in that you, you can't. You can't get everyone to like you. No, no. It's certainly, you know, I know I have a lot of people that dislike me. And that's okay. I, I have nothing to gain from doing being on the board. Never have. My heart has always been in the right place, and that's why I sleep like a baby at night. And, and, and I, think, I think I'll end with this, is that um, each one of you, I know that every decision you made was in the best interest of this community. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a yeah. selfish interest. No hidden agenda. No, no, no hidden agenda. Here. And that's the way I believe the job should be done. That's and right. That's why you three set the example, and I thank you. Thank you thank for watching. You. Hopefully well, you enjoy it. If not, let us know on social media. <laughs> <laughs>